I think family has so much to do with the business that that uh, if you if you thought back on it, and this goes both ways, if you're having a fight with your wife or with a kid, you will find every problem that day at work you possibly can. It's just something that happens. <laughs> if, 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 if you're yep. in that spirit, you're going to come to work and find every problem. Or that works mm-hmm. the other way yeah. too. If you're struggling at home or at work, <laughs> then you're gonna go, go home, home and find every little thing that just pissing you off at home. And I bent on both sides yeah. of that spectrum, and neither me one's that well. pleasant. <laughs> yeah, me as well. Yeah, it goes pretty deep, and especially for business owners, because business owners they're dedicated on they're dedicated to what they're doing. If you weren't, you wouldn't be a business owner. You know, it, you, you have to be dedicated to whatever you're doing, regardless of that trace of family, building a business, nurturing relationships, whether it be customers, partnerships, um, kids, everything. It's all nurturing the relationship. And how you do it is how you're going to do it both ways. Um, I, I, I would love nothing more than to my, for my kids to start talking to their friends like it's a fucking business because they heard me do it all the time. You know? <laughs> I mean, that would just be so. That would be the best. So you're saying that you, if you're gonna succeed at one, then you're gonna succeed at the other. Well, just like partnerships, uh, that's because I, I don't I don't believe that. Uh, no, no, no it, you you can excel at one and and fail very hardly at the other one. Well, what, what's the what 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 are the Who, who, that goes back to who, not about how you failed. It's about who you failed. Um, it's like, so, and you can fail, you can fail in business in, in multiple different ways and you can fail and be in, great in, in family, marriage man. and family. No, not necessarily because yes, you can. Well, it comes back to who, who did you fail? Like, if you so, failed your partners in business. So, at the end of the day, you only fail when you stop. So, so of course, you know, you're a quitter. Like, I get the whole narrative. You're a quitter. You're not going to succeed in, in being a good person and being a good family man, good dad. But, like, you can have, have something you're trying to create and do. Uh, fall out from under you and, and no longer exist or, or whatever and be a great dad. And then, and then most billionaires we know have been through multiple wives and ain't, ain't very good family men. Like, I'm talking about your billionaires. Like, so are you saying that if, if you try and have balance, you're only capping one or the other of greatness? No, I'm saying that you well, do, he I am saying question. that you don't have to, to be successful at one, you got, you know, it's just almost like they go hand in hand. I'm saying that's not the case. Well, let me ask you this. It if takes you, a better person. If you had a perfect match in your family, in your partner, in your wife, okay, uh, and, and don't think the perfect match is going to last forever, that's not what I'm saying. Let's say over the span of two years, you had a perfect match in your wife and you had a perfect match in your business partners. Wouldn't you say they're both going to be successful? No. Yeah, it's a perfect absolutely. match. Now, you on the other have... hand, if you had a shitty match in, in your business partnership and a perfect match in your, in your uh, family, your wife, one's going to be successful and the other's not. So it's about who you partner up with. It's about who you're, who your match is that's gonna, mm-hmm. that's going to decide that. that that's going to help it's decide. Not, yeah. It's not how your character is. Yeah, but your character no, will, but your you character will cultivate success in both. It can. Well, depending on the other, the you other can person. take a great match and make it sour. Just how how you end up dealing with different scenarios and situations on on one side over here. You know, there's some trials that you have to deal with. So it affects this this much. And so it turns out that situation shower, but well, there's variables in every situation absolutely. we find ourselves in and we're not absolutely. always in control of the variables, but how we control, but how we control each variable in two different in, in family and business, I would argue will be by the same principles. 
but yeah. Yeah, but it, it's the person as much as it is the partner or the wife. It's the one in between just as much. That's my point. Like, you got to be a big man to not let what's happening here affect what's happening here. Well, why would someone be in between you and your partner? Or a big person. The, you might have kids, <laughs> and those kids might why, actually why would, affect no, your relationship. It, you wouldn't bit. have somebody in between you and your partner but but what's happening with your family, your your immediate family, your wife, your children, whatever? Um, if like if something happens, and it's a big deal. You know, you don't let it affect this to create this this uh, wedge between either your partners or your wife. Now, obviously, it flip flops. So 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 that's have... my point. It it's about the person that's handling the situations on both sides as much as the perfect partners and the wife and the partners. Yeah. It's about that person, too. I have a, in my Vistage group, it's a CEO group that I meet with each month in Vegas, just for the, the listeners there. Um, one, of the, one of the gentlemen there, he's a, he's a fund manager, uh, private equity manager, and he, his kids were in the motocross. It's super, doing super well. He was he was going all over the country doing it, and, and he and he wrecked up in uh, Oregon, and put him put him unconscious for months, and fighting it all. And obviously that that that's gonna affect business, right? And that's the whole point of telling the story, is that is going to turn him upside down. Well, luckily he believes in partnerships, and so he had a partner that would take over for him at at the business while he dealt with that mm-hmm. family deal. And it was a huge deal. And one of the questions that was brought up by our Vistage chairman was, what if the roles were reversed, Francis? Would you put your family on a little bit of a pause and let your wife take control over that if your company was going through a dire situation and he thought about it for like two seconds and he's like absolutely i would so that that just really proves they're equal well you they're said really equal. you said something earlier well, like you have to actually have a balance here meanwhile wife both read a book that's called 80 80 obviously we know 80 20 is 100 percent, but it's talking about percentages of what you give and in that book then it it kind of gave you like a graph. If you want to be really super successful, you're going to give all your time to this one thing that you want to be really good at, whether that's family, whether it's business, whether it's sports, whatever you want to be really good at, you're going to give it that focus. And at some point you have to say, okay, what is the most important thing to me? And that is going to take the majority of your time and thoughts, regardless of whether you you know, want it to show or not, you're really going to put your focus on that. This man shows them equally. I would have to say, because I feel like you're not a failure until you fail at home. You can fail at 10 or 15 different businesses learning what not to do the next time. But like at home, I feel like, like you fail at home, then, then you maybe could get down on yourself as a failure. This room at that point. something that I heard about 20 years ago. Take a wagon wheel, put the spokes, and put family, business, health, religion, in all those spokes, number them from the hub out to the outer of the wheel from one to five, and then draw a circle hitting the number that you uh, feel like where you're at in each category and then try and roll that wheel down the road. See if it was, see if it, see if it was lopsided. <laughs> see, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what That's going to be a bumpy ride. But, but imagine if each one of those numbers were the same. Exactly. Then you got a smooth... Smooth so sailing. I, I want to talk a little bit but, about birds. But what if it's only a one? Then it's a tiny Two ass wheel and well, it ain't going, going nowhere. Yeah, you're yeah. sitting in one fucking spot, <laughs> not going anywhere. I want to talk about Bert's, com- Bert's point about as long as you don't fail at home. How can you run a failing business? 
How could you run a failing business? And be totally successful at home. I don't believe you can. I think that there's, I mean, I I filed bankruptcy and my yeah, marriage how? is just fine. How? Well, well, I knew you were going to bring that up. Okay, so you okay, have it, a defense. Yeah, so I have I mean, a that defense is on how, that. Like, you just, like, the market stops. You weren't prepared for it. You was a beginner. Like, you bought too many pieces of equipment. Like, you just closed the business. I don't see that as a failure. I seen it as a learning curve. Okay, exactly. So, so that that was my. That's but you exactly don't fail at business. Yeah, but that I'm gonna, point, that's, that's a to my business. point though. You don't if fail at business. I didn't fail at bankruptcy. home. I still it's a it's failing intact. business. Yeah, it's not saying working. it has fallen, yeah. but it's <laughs> a failing business. It, it's a and failure was, in business. Hey, and, and and let me ask you this: that that you filed bankruptcy. Um, obviously, we can put it on. We can put it on the market. We can put it that there was you had your overhead was too big, which is you had too much equipment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but that was a result of one little decision, or or it or was multiple it? little decisions, un, uh, oblivious, a little bit oblivious to what the market was going. Now, let me ask you this: You say you, home was fine, homes everything, but didn't you have bumps and rides at home? Oh, all the time. Okay, you're I still, still have my own. See, and that's what I'm saying. But I'm still like, working at it. I didn't file bankruptcy yet. We tried to once. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> didn't file bankruptcy. You undid your argument. I didn't. There. I didn't <laughs> um, file bankruptcy on my wife. I've filed but we thought about it once. But then went and got the same loan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so 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 I'm just saying, like, you're going to see. Um, it, it, the small decisions is what brought you to file in bankruptcy. But when and the small decisions but, are what made you almost come to divorce. But when it but makes you didn't sense, give that up. I seen which one's most important to me, obviously, is the family one because, you know, well, there was an opportunity to give up, but I wouldn't and I hung on. I could have done that with that business. When I look back, I gave up because I didn't know where to go, I wasn't experienced. I could I so I, I wouldn't say you gave could, up. You put a pause. Like um you put Well, I gave pause. up on that business because it was tainted anyway in my feelings. Well, but, yeah. So I didn't even try. Right. But 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 that's so, not a failure. That's just a bump along your yeah, that's along, along your I'm, business life experience. Yeah, experience. Yeah, exactly. It was, I don't it was see chapter it 11 like it it didn't fail the second you signed those bankruptcy papers. You chose to close it after that, but wasn't it chapter 11? Yeah, it was chapter yeah. so, chapter eleven. Like I, I it was like, just business stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, unit. They filed chapter eleven while I was still working, and we never missed a beat. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, in my world, they never missed a beat. We yeah. kept on trucking. They were they were down he's in the talk, dirt though. To but, our yeah. listeners, he's talking about the oil field. One of the one of the companies he was working for filed bankruptcy while he was while he was working chapter eleven, and that's why he's. It's not a failure. It's it's a simple bump in the road that you have to cross. Right, like I mean, for some people, you know, really got screwed out of their uh, retirements. So I mean, it it's hurtful. Yeah, but I mean, it's a, as the owner and stuff, like you do it last resort to save the company. You I don't do want, it to I, save the company. <laughs> you don't do it to get rid of the company. Typically, but you chose to close. Vertex's doors at that point and open up something that grew way bigger and better. Yeah. Down the road. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I would say, yeah, I, I think it's just as simple as that. Like the principles, the principles that you make a decision in, in business are the same principles, just, di just different subjects applied mm -hmm. to the same principles. Well, you're, you're still using the same mechanism Yep, in both your life. And that's and why business. every so business I agree with that. is a family business. How can it not be? <laughs> and it brings us back to the first topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> but when you tie it in yep. like that, then then you would just have to. We could dig into it more, but every every business should be a family business because I mean I love. I love being around family. I love most of my you, family. You know what yeah, everybody can like say. There's a lot of successful people that have never strove to be family men. Like, 
Yeah, but but maybe it's because for? they never seen the value or felt so, the love yeah, luck mean, of family. I, I'm not, I'm not, not every saying Every business that, is a family business, but obviously in our world, every business is a family business because that's the way that we tick. I mean, we're all family. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not all, remotely saying to be successful right. in business, you got to go yeah. get a family. We're not necessarily saying that. Um, let's say how you deal with if you're a single man or single woman out there making a go in business, being successful, your family may be the, the local bar. How you react with that local bar, do they like you? Well, it's going to – it. The, the, the reason why they like you is the same, going to be the same reason why your customers like you in business. Whatever the case is, family is uh, it, it, the the definition of family could be anything outside of business, honestly. Um, but I, I think that everybody everybody's going to look at us and say, "You're all family business. You're brothers. You're four <laughs> partners in the company. You're all, you know." How many times? There, I just fixed the topic. It's family <laughs> and business <laughs> because you just tied them together in a really proper way. Because yeah. to be successful in Bill's business, then you've got to create a family within mm-hmm. that business. Yeah. We might all be family, but it is like if without some sort of a family, like caring about someone else's welfare, you couldn't have success in business. I don't think. What one of, one of my mentors. Um, he makes it a point, and I picked up on this. He didn't point it out. He makes it a point that he does not call his employees employees. He calls them members of the company. That's, that's this is one of the – yep. How do you create that family? You know? Yeah, you Absolutely. create, you create that Absolutely. environment. And it's, it, it's a lot about culture. Um, and I'm going to address something. that Everybody's going to look at us as four brothers in partnership. How many times do you look at each one of us, whoever, whichever one, um, Bert, let's go to you. Do you ever look at us when we're looking at business, when we're trying to make a decision about business, when we're trying to make the business uh, operate as smoothly as possible, do you look at me as a brother or a business and a partner in business? A partner, 100%. Be like what? What do you think? Hundred percent partner. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, you the same. I, I know it's. Sub- I forget we're brothers sometimes. Yeah, that, yeah that's it, it's in our subconscious, yeah. but yeah, like I, when I think of you outside of business, you know, go watch he the game with you and stuff. Kick your ass, like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. Oh, go watch business with brother or, or anything. It's like you mean Nate, football. Go watch friend. football with a brother. Yeah. Or not, yeah, football. Go watch business. Any, or a game or anything. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Um, but no, for real, it's like I, I know it's in the subconscious, but I don't ever think about that unless it's brought up or talked yeah. about. I, I think we're together uh, because of the value we add as, as a whole. Yeah. Um, and, and we all, we all, like one of the biggest things that are struggling with me is as, as, as a founder – as a, as a founding member of this partnership, is transitioning from that total freedom to do whatever the fuck I wanted to, the, to that uh, being, being accountable. Held, being held accountable. Now, yeah. because of our business structure, um, this is a little teaser. We're going to talk about this in one of these episodes uh, in the future on the structure of our partnership because it's really cool and unique. But they're not actually all full partners yet. They're working into it. As far as blood, it, it creates that blood uh, sweat, sweat equity. That's what it's called. Anyways, I am taking this opportunity. I have full control of the company because of the structure, right? But I am, I am doing my best to intentionally act like you guys each have that full control that, that you will end up with. Because I need to work myself into that as a founding person, Mm. I'm trying to work myself up into being fully accountable to everyone. Yep. Which is the yeah. very intent I wanted partners. Well, coming from an, my own business, I have to do the same too because the, the, this is way better and way more options, but I have to deal with that too. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's, Coming from, and I'm sure Bert deals with it too. Like it, it just coming from a founder, fr- uh, the freedom of, of a single owner founder. It's it's. 
Bert I always w- I held himself through. accountable more more so than anybody. And <laughs> that's not yeah, a but I still it's saw a, a I still but. sought accountability because accountability was the number one reason why I why I partnered with another family member yeah. in a previous business because I wanted accountability. So uh, who absolutely who, who drove that? This. Like who it, drove that holding you accountable? You it, or your partner? Oh, me. Yeah. My partner like never you held, held me yourself accountable. accountable. My partner Boy. my partner never held me accountable over there. I, like he wouldn't call me out on anything. So yeah. I didn't even call him out on much stuff either. Yeah. But you there is so. unforeseen struggles with a new partnership like you change the entire aspect. Now you don't own your own time. Mm-hmm. You're sharing the value of your time with other people. Yeah. And you can't just go do side jobs and feel good. I can't. I Like, I'm not going to go get a side job and feel good about it. That's stealing for my partners because I gave them part of my time. I mean, there's a line, obviously. Right. right but, but, but in business, performing your profession... But, but I would say, I would say that like when the business isn't requiring a hundred percent of your time and unfortunately right now we're slow enough that it's not, you, you, you have that freedom to do what you want True. as long as your scope's covered. It's like, True. like, it's like Nephi over here last week was his birthday. Happy, happy belated birthday anyways. Mm, um, thank you. He spent the whole week at his house. Why? Because his scope was covered. It was his birthday, and he wanted to spend that with birthday week, and he wanted to spend that with his family. But if the company needed his time, he would have. It wouldn't even have batted an eye. I think it's a good time to point mm-hmm. out he still took calls. He still took care of everything that came <laughs> oh, up. He yeah. did offer to come help me if I needed it, so he was still working. Well, to be <laughs> fair, we all offered that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, all it that re- taught really me is not to tell you is, I was struggling. As <laughs> much because I'm way too proud to ask for help. <laughs> I know you didn't take yourself on. There's office, so many you know. routine things that we do now. Like only only being like in the position I've been in for two years. But if you really stop and think about the routine things that we do that pertain to the company, like none of us ever stop working. I mean, we're sleeping, and then obviously you don't get. That's so much. true. That's why, but they become routine to ourselves. where it's like shit. <clears throat> I've been being lazy when seriously, you just help make all this money off of just these little decisions and and little things that you you subconsciously kind of did, so to speak. Well, to prove your point, how often did you worry about what's going on on tower before you got back on tower? Like you're working on the rigs. 12 hours on, 12 <laughs> off. What was, and you're the driller. Like, did you worry about that other driller and what happened while you was off? Absolutely. I mean, obviously, when you're sleeping, you're not, fact, yeah. unless you're dreaming about yeah. it. Uh, well, that was but how I was. Too, depending on what was uh, going on. Yeah. Yeah, but you worried about what it. Was from, going yeah. On. You worried about what was going on 24 hours in front of you. Yeah. And then, obviously, you worry about all the variables that can make your life that much more miserable or help your help you out or help the situation out. You know, say you're going to get a bonus. I don't want to get I lost in partnership that, because but. our unique partnership and why it has worked for two years and why there is no reason why it won't continue to work, um, that is, that's going to be a fun, that's going to be a really fun full podcast. And it'll be it'll be exciting over the years to find reasons why it might struggle. That well, we, we, I, I we wanna, look forward to working through. Versus to finish this podcast, I a little bit want to tell about our latest fight as partners. Oh, if I, you want to finalize it with that, do we all get like? Is there enough time for all of us to put our? Yeah, I don't because I, 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 I feel like if you're going to do that, even soup. Be, and I just say, I slate soup out, as he said, the very least in the conversation. But he was still there. He still yeah. felt like the tension and everything that was going on. Well, let me briefly go over the from the start to beginning. And then and I'll, I'll make that quick. I, I, I know you guys don't believe I can keep a story small, but I will. <laughs> um, so I had this idea on how we could do a little exercise, get to know each other as partners, not as brothers. 
we all know how each other's brothers, but how, how we deal with as partners. And I didn't explain it well. I, I came out and threw numbers out that were irrelevant and caught everybody off guard. So I got a lot of kickback. Um, and, and to be fair, this phone stopped charging. That phone stopped charging. And so my <laughs> my whole life was going to shit. My phone weren't charging. I didn't have extended warranty on it so i couldn't get it overnight and i was under stress i chose to make this call while i was under stress and po- and just started it out all out wrong i got a lot of mm-hmm. pushback and i was mad um and so i hung up well i'm gonna let these guys speak to how they felt after i was mad but if they want to after i hung up but after a minute i my intent was not to ignore my intent was to get off the phone call gather my thoughts about me, call each one individually and say, look, this like, and I'm over here taking notes in this very notebook. I have notes on uh, what I did wrong to, to what I did wrong and what I can do to avoid that uh, getting mad on the, on the business call. Anyways, um, fast forward, I talked to everyone, everything. I couldn't get over my stomach and I, I was awake at two o'clock that night just my, I, I was just, something was wrong. So I just recorded a two minute recording explaining, explaining my apologies and not, not regrets because we got somewhere from that. Like we all pulled value from that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just did a little recording to all my partners about my regrets and, uh, or my apologies and, and, and just a small explanation, not, not any justification. Um, and I was good after that. Well, I think that that story sums up why there why there is such a high percentage likelihood that this partnership will work out, and there's no reason why it shouldn't. Because even a little thing like that, there wasn't one of us, and that that didn't say, "Well, I'm sorry too. Um, I could have done this or that." Um, but yeah, if for me, my story is a little bit like Nate's, where I was dealing with some stuff on job sites and stuff and uh, kind of multifaceted in different aspects of the, of the business that, that I tend to tend to inside of Tecton. So um, I was actually in the backhoe pushing snow at my own house. This was a Friday and I made a smart aleck remark and it was, uh, it had to do with, with well, we ought to put our nose to the grindstone, so to speak. We ought to work and not be fancy uh, vacations with all these exercises and stuff. So I made a remark like that due to how my day had gone and yeah. and whatnot. So we all have like it goes back to family and business. <laughs> it's like yeah. our uh, what we're going through greatly impacts down to the very conversation we're trying to have. Yeah, my, my night, and, and not take from anybody's time, we can go over an hour, who cares? Everybody's enjoying this anyway. Um, my night was miserable at home because of that gut feeling, that, 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 that grind I had in my gut. Like, I ended up spending a lot of the time out by myself in the hot tub, you know, because I, I couldn't feel good about, I just wanted to fight with, I, I didn't want to really just spend time with the kids because I don't want my kids seeing that uh, that weirdness. And uh, my wife, she understood. I told her, I told her, hey, I had a fight with the partners. I'm, I'm trying to gather myself up. Um, so I'm a little bit absent-minded today, tonight. So I, I made that communication when I got home. So And she was super, super cool. That's why she, yeah. Anyway, so you tell your part, Nephi. Orderly, my okay. part is, is it wasn't a fight. It didn't warrant the reaction it got. But as as Bert to alluded your to, mindset, but to mine, I, that's I I t- my when part. Something is wrong. My part, not your part. I take I take full responsibility. Yeah. And but but to to both of you guys' point, like that's how we know this can work. Because you I, after the reaction was over, everything you know, like and and this to everybody that cares was not about anything big or anything like, but to, to you guys' point, like 
you made a point to reach out and and tell tell us what what you feel like you did wrong and we told you what we did wrong you know how we could have handled the situation better and in that we're we're all like that and and i i'm really excited to to have more of these situations where we grow and learn off of um but yeah to me then then i i uh got cut up on a relevant number so i mean that was my point of way. yeah um, and, and that, that number shouldn't have been in the damn conversation that was my my problem so, but what do you say Lee? to me it not not out of disrespect, but I got off the phone and I laughed a little bit. <laughs> well, to be and fair, you, you were having a great day shopping with your old lady. You were having a great day. You, your mind. You, no, I hate shopping. <laughs> that was not a great day. <laughs> what about with it, your old lady? It threw a wrench. <laughs> oh, being with the old lady is always fun. <clears throat> um, the, but one, no, I, no, what I seen high. was... Through every adversity is an opportunity to improve your skills. And that was a little bit of adversity. And it was. Yep. And Nate just proved that he used it to try and improve his skills because he took notes. He called each one of us. Absolutely. And was, individually. When Nate got off the phone, the three of us were like, no, nah, we lost him. Yep. We didn't. Like, I refused to believe and then one of us was like no i think he was upset yeah and i'm like well if that's the case we're this conversation's over because we're not going to talk without him right yeah. and, and and none of us were point. mad at that's each a, other yeah so that that's further proof that we got a good opportunity here to make this work we all care yeah, yeah. we all care about what we're saying behind in front of or on the side of each one of us and it's important mm -hmm. to us and well, that proves it yep. so yeah. we got so much good out of that dumb little <laughs> fight already yeah. Look, we're getting miles out of yeah. it in a podcast <laughs> how many times <laughs> how many times do you ignore a phone call or, or maybe you guys don't do it much but i i can recollect um and then you put the blame on, oh, my kid came up, I need to jump off, or something came up, or like, I couldn't never. answer you. You know, never, never. never. You're not yeah. human at all. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I, I do um, all the time. No. So <laughs> after I hung up, I'm I only do when I'm on with never suit was from now best. on. <laughs> I'm be leaving some messages on your phone. <laughs> so I, after I hung up, I'm, I, I couldn't. I was not going to add any to that conversation. I had, I, uh, looking back on it, I should have said, well, guys, no disrespect, but I got to get off the phone call. Instead, I hung up. Um, one of the big lessons I learned is communicate. Communicate just a little bit. Um, being mad ain't a problem. That, that mind came, or that thought came to mind barely. Being mad is not a problem. It's how you overcome being mad that that uh, is makes or break you but at, behind the scenes on that i hung up and I, i'm feud i come in put my head on the desk and I, i'm just like should i call back and made the excuse my phone died I mean, <laughs> I, i'm sitting there really embarrassed okay, about now i, I, now oh, I get your now i get your question there is a yeah, time like, or two that I'm i've said my phone's like, gonna ah, die i'm embarrassed yeah. that was disrespectful to my partners yeah um and finally, I'm just like, no, use this moment to see what went wrong. Because honestly, that was one of the first in in my recollection. And from my standpoint, I know Nephi and uh, Soup didn't didn't feel this way. But Bert and I felt like that was a fight. Um, Only because I admitted that there was a jab in my initial comment. And there was a jab. Yeah. So, like, there, so, there was that fight. That, that by the way, in two years was one of the first. It was the first time I actually got upset at my partners. That's pretty cool. That is pretty oh, cool. And I was, cool. I was going to mention I, that. I, You've never raised your voice because, because you were mad. You didn't raise your voice in that phone call. And we even didn't realize, wait, was he mad? Uh, 
See, in my mind, I can't imagine. Had bigger I felt than the that. tension through the phone. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, well, yeah, because it was. Well, yeah, I felt but tension. I mean, disputes but aren't I bad. I felt that same tension. Yeah, right. Before. Disputes aren't bad. Yeah. Um, and, and I actually love disputes because out of disputes comes perfection. Mm-hmm. Bomb right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just solved life's mystery. Yes. <laughs> you follow that one thing. Out of disputes comes perfection. Only if you do it right. Like you have to take right yeah, steps yeah, to, well, make, right to make sure. that dispute yeah, but valuable. You have to be. You have to dispute. Because Biden ain't perfect, but he disputed he's perfect Trump in his own world. <laughs> you get another person like Biden who's gonna win him. The other person or Biden. Biden's probably gonna win because he's so fucked up. <laughs> We probably should have ended this podcast like no. two minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we should. Going um, down that rabbit hole. I, I love that rabbit hole because um, one, one of the subjects that I want to talk about one of these days, and, and religion, politics, and business, how they get go together. together. Uh, it, it's mm. such a fascinating, um, mm. and anybody that says, that they don't. That they don't. That they don't mix them. Yeah, like, <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you not have a customer or relationship or friendship that doesn't differ on religion, politics, and business principles? You could say I business see. ethics or morals or whatever. They yeah. all tie together. Yeah. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys to wait for the next podcast that will come out next Tuesday. <laughs>